Do you want to do automated mapping, photogrammetry, surveying on drones that don't have any SDK support? Drones like the Mini 4 Pro, Mavic 3 Pro, Air 3, and any future drone with waypoints. Complete hands-off mapping. And this is with a free tool I made called Waypoint Map. It's an online tool that allows you to generate the waypoint files that DJI uses to fly waypoint missions. You can load them up into your controller, all within the DJI interface. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up and use it. First, you're going to want to head over to waypointmap.com. So now I'm going to walk you through how to generate the waypoint file using Waypoint Map. And this will be just how to go through and use the software itself. It's changed a little bit. So you have three tools in the top here. You have a rectangle tool slash polygon tool that allows you to highlight different areas that are not uniformly square. So that means you can do this now, and then you can click on this and generate this out, and then this will generate across like such. You can also have this point tool right here, which will then allow you to manually select. Now it should auto update this last point to fall in line with the direction that you're heading. So, the la so it should always follow roughly the line as it's taken. So you can pretty much manually plan out your map course here. So if I were to clear this again, we can pretty much have it map vertically up and down like such. It's not terribly difficult. And finally is the circular tool, which the circular tool actually works really good because it can go over buildings. And what's special about the circular tool is I've made this so it always will focus on the ground level center point. So all the headings will always be focused on the center here. And also the gimbal will auto adjust so that it's always focused at the ground level. So each of these points will then have the gimbal angle set to actually the position. So if you were to then generate out another concentric circle here, like such, the gimbal angle will automatically adjust so that it's facing farther down like such and then the closer you get the more and more it will get to like 90 and then these points will be of course almost completely straight down so that's what's special about this is that it allows for you to generate out these concentric circles and do points of interest also I haven't even gotten started in some of the options down here. So now I want to increase the altitude of the circle. Well, I can. I can make this um, 100 meters. And the speed is how fast it goes between the points. The gimbal angle is irrelevant unless you manually set it for the circle. So if you set something for the circle, it will be that value. Otherwise, it will automatically adjust to be set at the dead center. So this now is 100 meters. This will generate these points out at 100 meters, and also the gimbal angle will automatically adjust to its focus down at that center. So basically with a bunch of these st tools stacked, you can pretty much fully accomplish uh, mapping a single point. And again, that is with the draw circle tool. The distance between paths for the circle will adjust the distance between the points on the circle. If you do this for something other than a circle, it will be the lines that are generated in between. So if we generate out this real quick, and we generate this, it will be the points, the line, the distance between each path. If you want to do them vertically, there's a bunch of options. Now the paid features are extremely fair. If you want to generate out a point with an action, so say for example, you want this to be every single one of these points, you want all points in here and you want every single one of these to take a picture, you can. Um, for some reason, DJI has put in like a, some type of, there's a bug or something that if you put in too many points, it will crash the internal map if you click on it, which means you can still fly and take the pictures. However, you can't open the map to check it, which is a little frustrating. I understand but that's outside of what I can control. The reverse points works for some people that are in the lower hemisphere that are in Australia, New Zealand, etc. They're having an issue where their drone is flying backwards. So this is just in case you need to do that. It doesn't really affect every, anything. It's just a quality of life thing. Um, the dynamically maintained altitude is if we want to enable this and we also want to set the generate every point so you can see a little bit better. Um, you can actually go through here. So this is on a hill. So this is uh, top of the hill, high up, this is bottom. If I were to go through and generate out a set of points here, 
can generate a lot of points. That's okay. There we go. So it's generated out each of these points now, and if you notice, the ones up here will have an altitude of, well, remember, we set it to 100, so it's we're expecting it to be 100. So that's 100 at the very top. And down here, it's dropped down to 90, which is about 10 meters of distance. And so each of these points are automatically adjusted to kind of keep it at the same level. So as you get here on this hill where it starts picking up, and it slowly drops down and then on the hill and then levels out back at the ground level. Generate all the points with an action if you want each of these points to generate with taking pictures. Again, you can manually do this. Set each, set each action, take picture, save that. Like that's manually something you can do, it's a pain. Um, and then also the straighten flight paths. So if we turn off this, this is the ideal setting in my opinion because what it does is if you want to map something, map this area over here instead of generating all the points. So then it maps the bare necessity that it's needed to have high overlap. So then it will map with these two on either side and that ensures that the lines are straight without generating a whole bunch of unnecessary points and potentially crashing the app when you open it. And then importing a KMZ file, that's if, for example, I have some KMZ files from earlier. I want to open these up. Then it will open up to the map here and it will have all the information there. Once you have everything set up, you just go in here and you make your selection of what you want to map. I am going to use the premium version for straightening the lines, but again, you don't have to. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to straighten the lines out. Uh, I'm going to have it auto adjust the altitude so that it does that. Um, and then we're good to go. So then I want to generate. I generate out the shapes like that, and then I'm also going to select it again. And I'm going to do vertical, a vertical pass as well. So this field will get two passes. So I click on this, and then I want to generate it north south. Click on that, generate. And now it's going to generate out the north south. Okay, so now I'm good to map. I've gotten everything done. I'm just going to come down here and I'm going to download the KMZ file. The generate is here for people that did not, from another video, that are a little confused, but um, you're just going to download the KMZ file. So I'm downloading the KMZ file and I'm good to go. So now we have this KMZ, we've got to do something with it. Now depending on what kind of controller you have, there's a slightly different process for each. But here's the basic premise. Every time you create a waypoint mission, each of those points is saved in a file called a KMZ file. All you're doing is you're replacing one of the old waypoint missions KMZ file with this new updated one. And then you just go to that waypoint mission in the controller or DJI fly app, and then you can just select it and it has all the points there for you. So first off, I'm just gonna go through and show you how to set this up for each different device really quickly. I promise this won't take long. There's a lot of different devices. Personally, the best one for this is the controller without the screen that hooks directly into an iPhone because you can then download this KMZ file and place it directly where it's supposed to be. So once you have your downloaded KMZ file, it will ask to download and you just wanna save this and then you wanna hit share and saved files, DJI fly. And then you just go to the Wayline Mission folder. Um, you can actually sort by date, which is what you want. And you want to make sure it's the newest stuff is first. So this was today. And all you want to do is you want to save it here. And then you want to go back to your files on my iPhone, DJI Fly, Wayline Missions. And it should save it here. All you do is you just click this, rename, copy. Delete, rename, and paste. And then you're good to go. So if you're using either the DJI RC2 or you're using an Android device with the controller without a screen, then you're basically just going to do the exact same thing right here. You're going to plug this device in. If you're using an Android device, make sure you enable the USB file transfer option. And then you want to go to your device, internal shared storage, Android, data, DJI Go V5, files, waypoint, and then you want to kind of click here on a random file and do the same process as we did with like an iPhone. Rename the file to copy the name, delete it, 
and then rename the file that you downloaded, the output.kmz file, drop it in here, and rename it to match. I mean, it should match the folder name. Doesn't matter which one you pick, pick the newest one since we just made a dummy waypoint flight. So if you have the DJI RC, you need to copy over that output KMZ file to an SD card. I just used the one that from the drone and you just insert that into your controller. So real quick, we have the output KMZ file on a disk. We're just going to copy it to the, if you're over here, we want to make sure we're on the RC and then we're going to go to Android data, DJI Go V5, files, waypoint, and we're going to copy it here. So we're going to click on one of the random files that is probably the newest, and then we're gonna copy it. And then we're gonna go back over there because we gotta rename the file to match now. So we wanna go back over to Android, data, DJI Go V5, files, waypoint. And then we want to real quick rename that where we put that KMZ file. So first I'm gonna rename the old one because I couldn't figure out how to delete it. I'm just gonna rename it old. And then I'm gonna go over this output and I'm gonna rename it what it was previously. Make sure that you have the KMZ file, make sure that it is outputted with the proper ending of .kmz. You can see this real here like that. So then real quick, you can actually check to make sure everything is loaded properly. You don't even have to turn on your drone. Just go to camera view up here, click on waypoints, and then you want to click on the top file. You should see that it's loaded up properly. You can zoom in, take a look, and make sure that everything is working as expected. So the first thing I will tell you too, just a heads up in that regard, is when you fly your drone and when you enable this waypoint flight uh, when you start it it's going to take off and it's going to go up to the altitude uh, that the waypoint plan is set and then it is going to fly to the first waypoint so that basically means if you have a very wooded area and the waypoint might be like a mile that way you don't have to necessarily worry about it trying to go the quickest i want to say the quickest trajectory it will it won't take off fly like a foot off the ground and then try to go forward it will fly up and then go to like the altitude of say like 180 some feet uh, and then it will start going in that direction which means that you can really you don't really need a huge area to take off from um, this is a rather little opening in this very densely wooded area so now we've gone through we've generated our waypoint map file we're just going to access it like we would access our previous mission that we just flew when we came back outside so i'm just going to click over here i'm going to go on the waypoint mission and I'm gonna click here, and then as you can see, it loads up all the points. Here's one that I did locally with the free version. And all you gotta do then is just click next, and you can see all the things that start, and you hit go and continue. Drone will take off. And you're good to go. Also real quick, you wanna make sure you enable the time shots feature and turn that on as you're flying your course if you're using the free version. That way, while you fly your waypoint mission, it auto collects the pictures for you and takes them automatically as you fly. Now, what I like a lot about this system is that it is very integrated into the DJI ecosystem. So you're not really concerned about that. Also, the premium version is very fair. If you wanna consider supporting me the upcoming RTK module, stuff that kind of pushed the bounds of consumer drones for mapping and commercial uses, please consider supporting because it actually does make a difference. Um, and also it does give you a good bit of features. I mean, people give to Patreon all the time. Why not at least give, get something in return and also contribute to kind of pushing the envelope. I think the premium version is $15 a month. You can pay for just a month and cancel it and use it for whenever you need it. And I think that's extremely fair given the ridiculous prices that all these other people are charging. If you have questions, let me know down in the comments. I'll do my best to answer them as we go. Also, there is a Discord server that will be a much better resource than the comments uh, to ask questions. People have asked a lot of questions, and I'm also a whole lot more responsive there than I am uh, responding to YouTube comments. Thanks for using Waypoint Map, and happy flying.